prayer. And then I'm thinking, oh my God, I got to be at this location, but then I can't leave it because this is an important situation. So I end up missing that appointment. That's the reason I'm not perfect. Little things like that keeps all of us from being perfect. But if you're not, since we're none of us not perfect because you'll never be able to do everything on time or everything precisely the way you ought to, don't let your imperfection be because you just lazy and won't live safe. Don't use that to say that I'm living in sin so nobody's perfect. No, no, no. The Bible says, as God said out of his own mouth, be ye holy as I am holy. So that means you can live holy in the presence of God. The reason that you're having so much trouble and think nobody can live holy because you're not is simply because you're not living in the presence of God. All of us are capable of falling if we're not in the presence of God. I am capable of falling if I stay out of the presence of God. But since I understand what is my help, then I know what I need to do to keep from falling. The same thing you know now. If you stay in the presence of God, the enemy cannot trip you up. If you're in the presence of God. But if we get lazy, if we get careless, and I don't care if you're the bishop, if you get careless, if I get careless, then I can slip, I can trip, I can fall. But God forbid, because I'm determined to stay in high places with God. And if you stay in the presence of God, you can live holy in his presence and I mean spiritually you'll physically be here doing the things you normally do on a daily basis but because you have a prayer life consistent the Bible when it says pray without ceasing that means I can be talking to you right now just as I'm doing but right now I don't know I don't know if you can even tell but I'm right now in the presence of God I'm talking to God while I'm talking to you but it's not interrupting anything that I'm doing because the Bible says we can pray in our spirit and the more you do it you can perfect praying in your spirit and be talking to everybody else but it's not distracting me from doing the physical things I need to do but my spirit is in tune with God right now and I'm talking to you and I'm not missing a beat. If you talk back to me, I can hear what you're saying. But I'm spiritually communicating with God. I'm telling God some things that I want him to do for me. I'm telling God how much I love him, how much I praise him, how much I worship him, how much I, I can't wait to get to heaven to be with him. I'm talking to him in my spirit because you can learn to talk to God in your spirit and not interrupt what you're doing throughout your daily time. That's what is, it, it is meant to have a prayer life. But not many people want to spend the time to get a prayer life. If you have been in prayer, and here's something for you to take notice of. Every time you spend time in prayer, you should come out changed. Every time you spend, if you don't come out changed, then you need to go back in. Every time you spend time in prayer, you should come out with some more anointing. You should come out with some more fire because prayer should ignite you. And when you come out of prayer, you ought to know God just did something awesome for me in the spiritual realm. I've been strengthened. If you hadn't been strengthened, go back to your closet. That's when you know you've met God. That's when you know God has done something for you. And for those that love to or don't understand and, and, and ignorantly, love to or uh, uh, ignorantly say that the tongues is unnecessary i beg the difference because paul said that with the tongue he said i, I pray in spirit and i pray uh with the understanding also in other words he said i pray in tongue and then i pray with the understanding and then he went on to say not only that when i pray my spirit pray it and my spirit make intercessions for me so when you're praying in tongues, don't you know the Holy Ghost takes over and begin to talk to God for you for some things you've been lacking and you didn't even know what you were lacking in. Some things you might know, but some things you may not know. But the Spirit will take over and begin to talk to God for you. You see, these are the things that happen to you when you have a prayer life. Because if you are a true prayer, you will pray in tongues if you have a true prayer life. Because the Holy Spirit will roll up in you and lead you to pray in tongues some because the Holy Spirit said, I got some things I need to say to God for you. Because you don't know everything you need to say. I don't know everything I need to say. So I need the Holy Spirit to come in and be my advocator to talk to God for me. Tell the Lord what I need. Strengthen me beyond my own understanding. 
That's what having a powerful prayer life does for you. You see, there's too many times that we get comfortable being an underachiever, even in God. We should never get complacent until we're at the place where we're just satisfied being where we are. As long as I'm breathing, I'll never be satisfied with anything I've done. Never be satisfied. Because there's always more I can do. There's always something extra that I need to do. There's always something extra that I need. I never arrive as long as I'm here. Now when he take me out of here, then I arrive. But while I'm here, I never get there. But you know what? I never stop trying. I never stop using every ounce of energy that I have to be the best I can be, to get everything I can get from God, to be more like him. Every day we should strive to be more like him. But it all starts with prayer, having a relationship with God. Now somebody might say, why is prayer that important? Why is talking to your wife important for your marriage and your relationship? Can you get closer in your marriage without talking to your spouse? No way. One of the biggest downfalls in marriage is real communication. I've been married going on 22 years. I've counseled and, and been, I've been to so many marriage seminars down through the years. I've counseled so many people I don't remember. But one thing that everybody that's been in a real marriage know that one of the main downfalls, there's others, finances and a few other things, but one of the main downfalls is real communication. Because if you do not have it, any relationship will cease to exist. The same thing with God. Don't you know prayer is communication with God? That's how we communicate with God in prayer. And that's how he communicates with us. And you see, God is standing idle, just waiting on us. He, he's, he's waiting on the call from you. Every time that you pray, you in, in essence have down God's phone number, spiritual number, and said, Lord, I need to talk. Lord, we need some community. Lord, I got to spend some. Lord, can you hear me? Will you answer? He always answers. He's never busy. He never sleeps. He never slumber. He's always waiting on you to make the call. You see, every time, just like you use your, your cell phone, if you use your cell phone, your, if you prayed as much as you use your cell phone to text and to make phone calls, I guarantee you, you'll have a prayer life. You ought to use that as a barometer. Every time you get ready to text, wait, I got to pray. Then I text. And I guarantee you won't have any problem living right because you will have a prayer life because most of us text and use the cell phone throughout the day. But while you're communicating with Facebook, I don't see you getting no more anointed. Folks can't even get, can't even work on the job because they're back and forth with their phone. But what about God? You see, that's why I told you earlier this year that Facebook is was sent by the devil as a distraction because I don't know any tool right now any website right now that occupies people time more than Facebook now listen to what I'm saying I'm not saying Facebook is evil I'm simply saying the devil knew that people are going to get hooked on Facebook and the more time you spend on Facebook guess who you're not spending time with all right because that's usually your free time right some people taking some of the work time and some of every time because Facebook have people so connected you got it on your phone you don't have to get to your laptop or, or your desktop computer because it's right in the Holy Ghost tape took me here I didn't know we was going here but I'm gonna stay here till you take me somewhere else and we're gonna get back to prayer because it all ties in you see some of your prayer time is going to Facebook that's what the Holy Ghost saying right now to me in the spirit. He said the Facebook have replaced some of my prayer time. But God said if you want to be holy, you want to be saved, give me back my time. If you want to know what it feels like to, to be saved and don't have to worry about if you die right now, you know where you're going. God said give me some time. Because that's why I told you Facebook is a major distraction that the devil knew was going to get people hooked. Twitter, Facebook, all these uh, social, th there's been such a boom in the social networks on the internet because the devil know if I can keep you talking to that friend or that so-called friend who you've never seen in another state or even another country, the devil know that at least you ain't talking to God. And if you ain't talking to God, the devil know you ain't 